Hi, how's it going? Hello everyone. I thought I'd make a quick video about my favorite audio interface. And strangely enough, it's not exactly an audio interface. It's the Sound Devices Mix Pre 3 Gen 2 Portable Audio Recorder. Keep in mind this is coming from the perspective of using it for dialogue and voiceover. I don't make music or layer multiple tracks, so I'm not very concerned with stuff like round trip latency, MIDI ins and outs, etc. And I almost exclusively use headphones, so I don't need outputs for studio monitors. With all that in mind, this portable audio recorder is my favorite audio interface. I do also use it as a portable audio recorder, and it is very good. If you don't have any use for the portable mixer and recorder functionality, there are plenty of excellent audio interfaces out there that are much less expensive. But there are still reasons why this is my current go-to interface. Some of these things are not entirely unique, but the combination of all of these things in one package is appealing to me. So let's get into it. First is something I really like in an audio interface. It just works. It is a class compliant USB audio device and it doesn't need any additional drivers or software. It is completely plug and play on PC and Mac. I've used audio interfaces ranging from cheap to expensive that simply do not work without dedicated drivers or additional software. And even some supposedly plug and play interfaces have caused me to chase odd volume issues and input routing issues. I've never experienced anything like that with the Mix Pre. I've plugged it into multiple computers over the years and it has always just worked. This certainly isn't unique to the Mix Pre, but it is something I appreciate. It also has a power switch. It's not the easiest to access with a USB-C cable plugged in, but it is something that not all interfaces have. Most computers these days will leave power on to the USB ports when the computer is off. I could just unplug the interface or even just leave it on all the time, but I prefer the option to leave it connected and turn it off. I might use my recording setup five days in a row, or I might not use it for a month. So the option to leave the interface connected but turned off is convenient for me. I also like that I can pick and choose which inputs are being sent out over USB. It supports six tracks of USB output over USB, though I believe the default audio device drivers on Windows only support two. But even on Windows, I can pick which mix of inputs I want sent to each of those two USB outputs. In the menu, you simply go to outputs and you can see USB one all the way through six. And all you have to do is pick one of those and then you can choose which input or track or mix of tracks is being sent out on that input or on that out USB output. I like that the headphone output can provide plenty of power for 300 ohm headphones or for lower ohm headphones, but very insensitive ones. It can also be configured as to what you want to send to it. USB audio, direct monitoring of a specific channel, etc. I also like that the audio level meters are extremely detailed and give a great indication of the levels. The meters also indicate if you are peaking or if you are hitting the limiters. There are also LEDs around the input knobs just to give you additional visual indication of the audio levels. You can even separately adjust the brightness of the display and all of the LEDs in the menu. As for the mic preamps, they are definitely a big plus. Not only are they very low noise, they offer quite a bit of gain, making them great for virtually any mic that I'm likely to use or test out. Even the famously insensitive SM7B is no problem, which is what I'm using right now, recording with the Mix Pre 3, and I don't even have the gain maxed out. It has a 3.5mm input that can be set for line or mic level and routed to any of the outputs, allowing the use of lavalier microphones or other sources that use a 3.5mm plug. All three of the XLR inputs can be configured for line or mic level, and they can have phantom power turned on or off, and all of this can be configured individually for each input. And there are additional features that largely stem from this being a portable field recorder, but they could be useful at times even when using it as an interface. It has adjustable analog limiters on the mic inputs to prevent clipping distortion. It has low cut filters with multiple frequency options. It has an optional noise reduction plugin called Noise Assist, 
which admittedly is a paid add-on and it's not inexpensive. And it can only be applied to a single channel at a time, but it works surprisingly well. Granted, noise reduction and low cut filters can be applied in post if you are recording to a computer. But if you're using the interface for a podcast or for streaming, or if you just appreciate a workflow that limits the amount of post work you have to do, the ability to apply a low cut filter and even some very transparent noise reduction in real time can be really handy. And even if you are fine with post work, an analog limiter to prevent clipping is far better than trying to fix it digitally after it's already been clipped. But if you want the ultimate clipping prevention, when used on a Mac with one of the recent versions of Mac OS, you can actually utilize the 32-bit floating point mode on the MixPre 3 Gen 2. So assuming your recording software supports it, you can actually record at 32-bit float directly into your software on a Mac with no additional drivers or anything. So pretty cool. And since this is a recorder, you can record to an SD card while also sending audio to the computer. It's also built like a tank, it's surprisingly compact for what it is, and it has a built-in touchscreen to change settings right on the device. None of the stuff I've talked about here relies on special drivers or extra configuration software that you have to have running on your computer. It's all right here in the Mix Pre, while still connecting to the computer as a simple plug-and-play interface. So, is this the best value for the money? Probably not, especially if you have no use for the portable recorder functionality, and certainly not if you need features it lacks, such as balanced outputs for monitors, MIDI or toss link connections, etc. But if you have use for an excellent portable audio recorder and also need an interface, this is definitely worth consideration. I can plug the Mix Pre 3 into any computer and have a compact, well built interface with lots of clean mic gain, hardware limiters low-cut filters that can be applied on a per-channel basis, noise reduction, built-in mixing, excellent level meters, a powerful headphone out, and 32-bit float audio support on a Mac, and more. And all of that is plug-and-play, with no special software or drivers needed for any of it. Still, most can get away with an interface that's a fraction of the cost. And like so many things these days, the price has gone up quite a bit since I got mine. So I can't say the Mix Pre 3 will make sense to everyone as an audio interface. But it might not be something that even comes to mind when most people start looking for an audio interface, so I thought I'd point out that while it is technically a portable audio recorder, it just happens to also be my current favorite USB audio interface. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care.